Hallelujah, Jesus, brothers and sisters. Today, we're going to be getting in into this disgusting world, this world that is full of sin, this world that is full of iniquity, this world that is full of transgression. God has sent his one and only begotten son to die for all of the sin, all of the things that we've done that we knew nothing about just so that he could bring us towards his grace just so that he could bring us with his mercy and all of his faith the book of john john chapter 3 verse 16 states that god so loved the world he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life now i know some of you out there may not understand but jesus says that we all have an end There's an end to everything we do. And after we die, there's a place, a place that goes on for all eternity. Overall, in the book of Genesis, when God created man, God created this flesh so that we could live forever. Of course, Adam and Eve, they lived all the way until they were 900 years old. And see, the thing with this is that before Eve was tempted, they had everlasting life but now that this flesh been contaminated god has to cleanse us he has to cleanse the filthiness of sin that was that came from satan that came from leviathan that came from lucifer that nasty serpent he has to cleanse our bodies from that wicked ways so that we could spend all eternity with him glory be to god that he also had a plan for us of all what he created so we don't suffer for all eternity. We're gonna talk about what's going on into this world and everything that's happening in this world. Some in fact believe that the United States of America is Babylon. Some even say because of the most powerful military we have on earth, the corrupt Republicans and the corrupt Democrats and all of the money that's basically being generated in and out of this entire country tells other countries that when it comes to war, America's more dominant. So it gets people to kind of believe that America is the new modern day Babylon which is what I'm going to be going through. And I'm really going to really break down that America isn't too much, well, what we call modern day Babylon. See, if you understood that Babylon was a very powerful people back then, right? But according to the numbers of people they had, King Nebuchadnezzar, These people had a lot of sickness and a lot of illness going on in their country. And see, with King Nebuchadnezzar reigning in Babylon, the Israelites who rebelled against God, well, however, disobeyed him in his laws, was held captive in Babylon until people started to understand God's wisdom and God's understanding, giving them the power to defeat Babylon and wipe them clean. So what we're gonna literally get in today is how this entire world is Babylon, indeed, and what's going, and what basically goes around this entire country. So we're gonna start early. In the early 1700s, before the 13 colonies came on this land, which was pretty much occupied by 60 million Native American tribes, These people were at war with each other. And during the time of having war, they had different ideologies, different analogies, and different things based on their perspectives. I'll break it down. If you were a chief tribe, tribal leader, then basically what you think is right and what you think what you should live by is will be based on your perspective. And because you being the chief of that tribe, That's what everybody within your tribe has to follow based on your belief. And so you have another tribal chief leader that doesn't agree with you. And all before you know it, uh, because his tribe is bigger than your tribe, he's going to overthrow your power. These people were not civilized people. They were not they were not tolerant. In fact, they were more intolerant because of the problem 
that they have is power, submission, and subjection. After after the English settlers came here, the 13 colonies, when they went to explore the land, the people even fought amongst each other. You know, they battled with each other, ripped each other's head off, insulted each other, slurred each other, which pretty much sounds very familiar like what goes on today. In fact, we even had some tribal leaders that literally found it okay to have sex with girls, 13-year-old girls, 14-year-old girls, and even 15-year-old girls. Like even there's a spot, some there's even a spot all across the United States of America, uh, well, basically on this land that they take those little girls to and they have sex with them. They take them inside the hunt. And, you know, the women that fight against this and the women that don't agree with this, well, they were pretty much slaughtered and killed. Pocahontas is a prime example of what basically happened. At the age of 15 years old, her husband, before she, before John Rolfe stepped into the picture, she was married to a another Native Indian who was so happened to be a 25-year-old Native Indian guy who basically impregnated this 15-year-old child. Some girls know after they reach a certain age in between 14 through 15 through 16, or possibly even 17, know that they no longer can live like a child. They have to grow into their early womanhood. And this is what you call a big sign of subjection, oppression, and, well, it's just straight up evil. These women were subjective to listening to their tribal leaders, no matter how many women refute against it. So they even have different tribes where people left escaped their tribes to go join another tribe that basically wasn't doing what that tribe was doing. And then they claimed war with that tribe. And I tell you folks, this was not a fist fight, a regular normal fist fight. This this was a, a bloody war. Heads were getting cut off. People were getting lynched. People were getting hung. And these native Indians, well, brothers and sisters were very intolerant and they knew very little about what the purpose of life was ever meant so they basically surpassed the point of not only not understanding life and human life at that but they got to the point to where whoever has the most people and whoever has the most power and killed most of the other native indians those are going to be the people who remain in power so just to break that down if you have more people and you've killed more more tribes than this tribe then you are the superior tribe and what you say goes and everyone has to listen to you women used to walk around pregnant like what we have in the day women used to be with their men and they walked around naked about what we have today over here in America. We don't have civilized people anymore. We have, it's just gotten to the point that, well, you even have some people that can't really take care of themselves right or take care of their relationship. They're just only in a relationship to get in one. John Rolfe was a perfect example, another English settler who came out there to the Virgin Islands, who possibly came there to save Pocahontas for the oppression and subjection she was going through and even later still that day when he brought her home with him she basically told every every English person in his town what happened back on the Virgin Islands what they used to do to her what they did to any other girls so this is why the other English settlers came over there to pretty much settle on that island and save most of the girls that were being under subjection and oppression. Now, they may not had any idea about what rape was, well, at least the Native Indian tribes, but the English settlers did. They knew when someone resisted and did not want to participate in any form of sexual activity, and with that being forced upon them, they know that that person is being taken against their will. John Rolfe did a favor for the people. Well, not just John Rolfe, but the entire 13 colonies that came to this land did a favor for the women and the other men who were under subjection with the big tribal leaders. 
And there may even be more people still today that are like that, that are just like these tribal leaders. And that's what you call pride. Because they have so much pride in themselves and what they do in their life, nobody don't need to really basically tell them what to do. Nobody doesn't need to tell them what to do. They're too good and they're too stuck on about themselves. And see, the problem with this is this is what we're going on today with the mental health community. In the early 1910s, I believe, the act of homosexuality had literally was already a movement. People was already behaving this. Um, the Americans over here, well, at least the Caucasians at the time, were literally participating this behavior. There were some even people protesting gay rights in the street to, they were basically begging society to give them the okay to do what they want and be equal to society when these people were really literally mentally ill. And the problem with this, the same time that these people were protesting gay rights was the same time the black Americans were being hung, murdered, and killed for the color of their skin. Some people, but some people even believe that they were equal to those people because of the behavior. So you have a mentally ill guy who acts like a woman and because nobody treats him as as much as he wants to be treated, he's equal to the next person that is judged by their outer appearances. You see, you can be born black, you can be born an ethnicity, but you can't be born a behavior. And see, this is pretty much what was going on. So I'm going to go on and let you know, guys, to open up your mind. The white people that were practicing homosexuality in the early 1910s did not only accept it, the black people. They didn't accept anybody that was not practicing the same behavior they were. And some black people were so subjective to the point to where they had to have some type of acceptances. To basically behave the way they do. So this goes to basically show you that these people were surrounded with lust. And that's all they cared about was lust. If these gay people, the mentally ill, the people that rain, that waved that rainbow flag in the air. If they had any scent of respect for the black people then and now. They will be marching for equal rights. They will be marching to be against abortion and they would definitely be marching to have every young woman and man stay out of the streets, but they don't. They want to push their behavior, they want to push their agenda, and they want to push what they do, what they feel like they want to practice in public. So this basically goes to show you that when you're in when you're built up with pride, you're full of all kinds of demons. When you're full of pride, you only care about yourself and you only care about what you want to bring to your table. This basically goes to show you that at the time of them having their mentally ill movement of a sick behavior was in the early 1910s and even before that goes to show you that black people at that time was getting hung getting killed getting murdered and some of them were getting beat up to death so just to only show you that 90 percent of the white americans or possibly 80 percent or majority of the white americans that were gay did not like black people if they did not practice their behavior. Did not care about black people if they did not behave the same way they did. If you, it's almost like if you don't march with me and accept what I, if what I want, then I won't accept who you are or what you want. Because to the gay race, these black people was just black people that was not written in a constitution. They actually even pretty much saw these people as not even American citizens. In order to be accepted by the gay race, you have to do what they do. 
behave a certain way like them. This was the only way that black people was accepted by the mentally ill agenda. This is why whenever you see any nowadays on these foolish shows, you see anything that concerns black, anything concerns a black man or a black woman, it has a lot of something to do with homosexuality. And the problem with this is that the gay people were very intolerant of sanity. They, they had a big hatred for sanity. This goes to even show you that there were some doctors that even discovered that the act of homosexuality was a disease. In fact, it was a disease to the brain and still is today. And they believe that this disease can get cured. Unlike some people in the early 1910s, when they took the gay black, when they took the gay people, right, they give them shock therapy, they give them MRIs and even brain surgeries because they didn't clearly know what was wrong with these people at the time. They thought they were sick in their head when they were actually right. These people were sick in their head. They had no idea what was basically what was going on or what was basically happening in life. These people didn't have no idea what was literally going on in their head. So this is why they were doing the things they were doing. The gay race did not accept or push or promote in any way any black person at that time and even today if that person does not behave the same behavior. Very few black people at that time in the early 1920s were found in the gay community. They were gay themselves. They were mentally ill themselves. So some of them was even subjected to be accepted by white people and be accepted by other races of people is to behave the way they do. But there were even some racist homosexual guys that grew up and taught that black people were disgusting. But you have some of them that only were interested in the black people because of the act of homosexuality. They was even pushing their agenda. In other words, that person, that mentally ill person was raised to only go after their own race. But instead, they said that if one race could be gay, then all races could be mentally ill. All races can be mentally ill. And so I should go out and I should participate in all races. This was the only way black people was pushed to be accepted in society by the low levels, the disgusting people, the mentally ill as if they practice what they did. The minute you have a single black guy a single black woman in the early 1920s marching in a mentally ill protest come to a decision that they don't want to do this, then they will no longer have that support of that community. They will be cut off and cast out like a leopard. And see, these people are stuck on lust and they're stuck on their own insanity. And this problem was nothing compared to the civil rights. And the problem with this, in the early 1920s, I believe, in the early 1920s, there's been a movement throughout all of America with the mentally ill, but their liberation did not end until after the late 1960s and all the way to the 1980s. And the problem with this situation was that, not that it took in long, it was approved that gay people have the same equality as the black people when they really don't. They're comparing black people to a behavior, to a behavior. They're saying that the black people is equal to a individual who is practicing a behavior. And most gay people came out pedophiles. Most gay people even came out abusers. Most gay people even came out rapists. You may even wonder, why? what concerns this? If two women find it okay to hold hands together, if two men find it okay to hold hands together, they're committing rape. If a woman chooses to give up her womanhood, if a man chooses to give up his manhood, then he's okay with being raped. 
Because to be raped is to be traumatized. To be raped is to be stripped from, is to be taken from. So these men and women that were taking each other's manhoods and womanhood, they were okay with this because they was okay with being insane. Any woman that decides that she's going to get up and sell drugs or go to a strip club or be with another woman, she's okay with being insane. She's okay with being sick. And this is what Martin Luther King was also marching on, that not only black people have equal rights as white people, but that the same sanity, the same sanity that we have that we black people have is the same sanity that you white people should have as 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 well if a black person in the protest was trying to change someone and bring them to sanity like i said before they get subjected they get thrown out well yeah they get objected and they get thrown out by that community because that whole community was based on behavior This is why we even have even the strongest black folks today that was marching. And even the white people, they all agree on marching together because black people are American citizens. Until after the 1960s, well, yeah, and until the 1960s, when black people were given the equal rights, 20 years down the road, they've given gay people the equal right to behave a certain way when it sounds kind of funny after the late 1980s it was the world's health organization aka the people that dr fauci is with the world health organization approved that the mental health the homosexuality is no longer a disease It's no longer a disability because of a social movement. The social movement was already in place since the 1900s. And it's been going ever since then. But those moments that that was happening, there has not been no movements or social movements of black agendas until Emmett Till. Until the murdering and the death of Emmett Till. So even at that time, black people were still getting beat up, getting murdered, killed. Black women were getting raped by other white guys and there was no justice. There was no justice because of the color of their skin versus somebody that behaves a certain way that proves to society that he's mentally ill and he does not comprehend sanity. He's equal to somebody that was born with that skin color versus somebody that wasn't born that way but was raised in an environment that abused him, that molested him. And even at that time, black people were getting hung and murdered for being black. And this gay agenda was being pushed against the black community because, well, in this country and pretty much all around the world, They do not like people with power. They don't like people with power. They don't like people that pushes sanity. They don't like people that gives the truth. This goes all the way back into the book of Matthew. When Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, he was telling people to change from their sin, change, turn from their wicked ways. And the reason why this was done, there were people that got angry, that got upset. These demons are actually real. So after the 1960s, when Martin Luther King gave his speech that I have a dream speech, millions of lives were actually changed. Martin Luther King based his whole, his whole life on the word of God. Disregards what the FBI says. Disregard what the 13, 14, 15, or probably 25 women say what Martin Luther King did and or what he's also being accused of to break down the black community. After black people became American citizens, which they already were, but they were not treated to. When black people were treated now as American citizens, all of a sudden they decided to use Martin Luther King and accuse Martin Luther King of having sex with multiple women. 
They were also accusing Martin Luther King of raping women, beating women, and doing all of these disgusting things with women while he was preaching the word of God and bringing equal rights. Well, brothers and sisters, what I'm going to tell you is some of that stuff don't make any sense because the word of God says that you cannot serve two masters. You cannot live two lives. You will love the other one. You will love the other one and you will hate the other. You'll practice one and you'll hate the other. If Martin Luther King was doing these things, would not he have the power to literally know that he was going to die? Did he have the power that he know that it was going to kill him in the process? The thing about this, if Martin Luther King was this big, fake, phony people say that he is, right? If he's this big, fake, phony people accusing him of being, he would have never st stepped on a pole and put his life on the line. He would have never did that. So it was pretty obvious that when Martin Luther King was sermoning, giving a sermon and preaching the word of God, he knew that he was going to die. And even if he knew that he was going to die, he would have literally been subjective to the white man. He would have literally been subjective to the people that literally told him what to do. He would have been subjective to everything they was telling him to do. He would have never gave that sermon. He would have never marched with those black people. In fact, Martin Luther King wasn't the only one, in fact, getting brutalized. But there were many others out there and other white people who were getting brutalized as well. Martin Luther King wasn't running out there having sex with all of these different women. They're telling people that because they want people to get broken down if they actually did. Quote unquote, Martin Luther King said that if the CIA and the FBI heard him in the room beat women, rape women, and said all of these things, what he literally said was they didn't do anything about it. They didn't stop it. They didn't go and stop it and cut them loose. Why? Because he knew that they were lying on him. This was actually proof and evidence that Martin Luther King said that if that was literally happening, right, they didn't stop it. So if that was really actually happening, if that was really going on with Martin Luther King, then they should have stopped it. But they didn't. So that basically even goes to show you, I don't care if they have 25 women witnessing against him. These women were literally being paid to follow Martin Luther King around and try to get him to do these things with his wife. Even if his wife says that there were nights that he didn't come home and all of this stuff, you have to also even imagine that Martin Luther King was also living under oppression. Dr. King himself was even going under deep emotional distress. And he's quoted and said many times, that if he is weak and the nation see him weak, then they're going to get weak too. There was times where Martin Luther King couldn't even come home to not think about the stress and the pain that he was going through. There was even times where Martin Luther King would have to go out and meditate and free his mind of all of the pain and oppression he was literally going through, just like Jesus. When Jesus got away from the people, he went to go pray out of the mountaintop from being around the people all the time. But the, this goes to basically show you that they're doing these things to break down not only the black community, but the people that agree with equality and sanity. This is why they're throwing out that mentally ill agenda because they want people to be mentally ill. They want people to be sick in their heads because they don't want freedom. They don't want peace. And who are these people? The Vatican Church. The general pope of the Vatican Church in Rome. These were the disgusting people that have conquered, destroyed, and taken over the world. But these are the people that Brother Adams, Pastor Sam Adams in Ocala, Florida, was saying that America is Babylon. And these are the guys who is responsible. Well, the whole generation of wicked serpents and devils was the, re was the responsible ones for having America and all across the country being controlled and ran by these people. 
But I would also like to add to Brother Sam Adams that it isn't just the United States that's Babylon. It's the entire world. Anywhere you see inequality, anywhere you see the mentally ill and people throwing up their flags and people practicing behavior is where Babylon is. The word of God said it will be like the days of Noah, but it will literally be worse. And it is. We have all kinds of mentally ill people changing their sex in different countries and violence. They've even forced people in Thailand to this very day that if they practice the act of homosexuality, they have to get a sex change. And it's not just here in the United States of America. What makes you Babylon is the practice of sin. Just like in the book of Revelation, when John seen the harlot sitting on the beast, drinking the blood of the saints, she was drinking the sin and the iniquities against God. She was drinking all of these things with no problem. In other words, she was sinning with no problem. She was sitting in iniquity. She was committing the acts of adulteries and committing all abominations against God with no problem. And people actually do this. They sin with no problem. And he basically say that these people are the child children of the devil. Because the devil sin with no problem. He does what he does with no problem. And these are the people that God say that he will and is going to cast in the lake of fire. This is what God is going to use to destroy people. This is what God is going to use to cast them out and throw them in the lake of fire. Today, brothers and sisters, is Babylon. Babylon is this world. Everywhere around the world is Babylon. It's not only that the not only the general, the black pope, who is the general of the whole Vatican Church, it's not only him being a part of this and running everything in the world, but it's also the act of other countries practicing and doing the same thing these Romans did back in Jesus' days. The same stuff these guys are doing. The same things every country, every tribal leader, Native Indian tribes, these guys are doing the same thing. And even in ancient Egypt, they practice homosexuality because of a deity. They, these people followed whatever their pharaoh brought to the table. It was never a command. It was never something they had to do. It was just, hey, I found peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You guys could eat it if you want to. And a lot of people are going to try that disgusting sandwich made by the pharaoh with his dirty hands. So God says that these people who sin with no problem who walk on this earth and commit sin with no problem and don't turn from their ways are the people that are condemned to hell. Joel Osteen, Joyce Myers, Creflo Donald, uh, Dollar T.D. Jakes, Donovan Dumas, another false prophet, Tarn Tara, another false prophet, Renisha Jackson, Twan Jackson, her and her husbands are false prophets. We have even, even the biggest people, all of them, false prophets. These are going to be the people who sin with no problem every single day. Every single day. With no problem. They follow the works of Satan. They follow the works of the devil. And these are going to be the people that are going to get cast in the lake of fire. So brothers and sisters, if you're hearing this video or if you're watching this video, I want you to understand to not be like these people. Because these people are on their way to hell. Martin Luther King already set an example. They want to break Martin Luther King. They want to break everything he talked about was truth. And they're going to do whatever and everything in his power and their power to destroy that. So that people don't see the truth. This is the same people who is the head of the Vatican Church. Who is over the Illuminati. Who is over the Rothschild. And it's, the gen and it's the black pope who is the general. He's going to make sure that these people go out of order. He's going to make sure that everything stays unbalanced. 
because these guys are literally preparing for the war. And I'm not only talking about the war. They believe the book of Revelation. They know that Jesus is coming back. Our United States government, the whole world government knows that Jesus is real. They know that God is real and they're doing everything in their power to try to prepare that because they want to fight him. They want to fight the creator. And it's just like in the just like in the Holy Bible, God laughed. He laughed at these people that think that they could gather their swords and their shields and try to fight God. They look like we are ants to our father. We're ants to him. We're ants. God is big. And it's him who's given us free will. We're like ants to our to our father. And he tells us that he's all powerful and all knowing. So if you think that you can outsmart the creator, you really are possessed with a demon. And some people really actually even think that possession has something to do with spitting up blood or bending your back wise like the Catholic Church and the 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 buffoonery, the 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 foolery that basically goes on in the church saying that they they did it, uh they they you they cast out the demon and witches are real. None of that stuff is not real. There is no witches, there is no warlocks, none of that stuff is real. People use those things to fool people. And the Catholic Church managed to do that with millions of people. They've managed to do that with millions of people and literally get people to believe that this is what they actually do. That exorcism is real when it's a big fake phony. If you really want to know what a possessed demon is, a possessed person commits acts of homosexuality. That they're possessed. Transgenderism is possession and proof of a demon because according to the word of God a demon will not get cast out and come out of you if that person does not turn to God so the word of God even says according to what the word of God is saying that only Christ can change us and if you don't change in Christ Jesus and find Christ Jesus then more and very surely you will too be possessed by a demon. And God's exorcism is casting all those who bound against his word into the lake of fire where they will remain for all eternity. So unless you don't want this demon to possess you, you have to turn to God and give up your wicked ways so that you don't get cast in the lake of fire. Martin Luther King set an example. Brother Martin Luther, back in the earlier days, preached against the Catholic Church. These were the people of God who basically even showed how merciful God is. And if we don't accept his grace and his mercy, then we too are gonna get cast in the lake of fire. Brothers and sisters, God loves you and he cares for you and he sent his message so that we could be saved, not be bound in sin. God wants us to change and he wants us to have mercy on others as he has having mercy on us. So brothers and sisters, I tell you today, accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior so that you don't get cast in the lake of fire. Because God is not playing, brothers and sisters, and he wants us to be saved. Be blessed and accept Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Because God is always a good God, as well as we should be. Trust in him and have our faith in him so that we be with the Lord for eternity and evermore. Be blessed, brothers and sisters.